the very first recorded scientific measurement was the gauging of the rising and falling of the Nile using a level measurement device called a Nilometer several millennia ago. The pharaohs used it as a process indicator for timing the planting cycle. Yet a recent control poll shows that level measurement is considered one of the two most vexing problems by process automation professionals. Another control poll indicated that the reasons advanced for this are either that the application was poorly designed or that the level of the fluid or solid is itself very hard to measure or that the measurement technology itself gives poor readings. If we've been measuring level for thousands of years, why do we still have so much trouble? I'm Walt Boys, Editor-in-Chief of Control and ControlGlobal.com, and this is another episode of Back to Basics for the Process Automation Media Network. This time, we're talking about level measurement. Certainly part of the problem is that most process engineers do not think of level as a control function. They think of it as a process function, and there's a difference. They think of mixing and batching and storing and surge control and other process segments which to them, and strictly as a side issue, involve a level measurement. And many simulator for programs for processes treat level measurement equivalently. And conventional loop tuning software is not always optimized for level loops. A process engineer in a chemical or pharmaceutical plant looks at the reaction happening inside a reactor vessel and not the fact that because the reactor is sparged or agitated, it's exceedingly difficult to measure the level in the reactor. In fact, in the case of an agitated reactor, there is no level when the agitator is running. There's a vortex. What the operator wants to see is an inferred value, what the level measurement would be if the vessel's contents were still. This is a very difficult value to present accurately. Yet that's what the operator means when describing the level in that reactor vessel. Many processes in the chemical industry as well as in the pharmaceutical industry and even food processing sectors are scaled up from pilot operations that may be as small as bench tops. In such cases, the controls are sometimes an afterthought and not well integrated into the plant design. This too contributes to the difficulty of making a level measurement. Vessels are generally designed for the purpose of holding or processing a liquid or solid, and they're not designed for the ease in measuring their levels. You find vessels built through floors in plants, vessels with only inlets and outlets and no measurement ports, vessels where there are so many internal structures that are few ways to measure level. If the engineer who orders the vessel doesn't understand the process control loop of which the vessel is a part, it's very likely that the vessel will be difficult to instrument for level measurement. So what sort of things should our process engineer know to do when specifying the vessel? It's important to know about the purpose for which the vessel is to be used, as well as the characteristics of the fluid or the solid or the powder that it will contain, and the measurement technology being proposed. But in the end, it's the performance of the vessel and sensor within the entire process loop that matters. Mostly, when we start a level measurement application, we do it wrong. We start with our favorite level device, and that's backwards. Before you do anything else, you have to understand the application parameters. Most of us get so practiced with instrumentation design that we seem to start with the last ISA 20 instrument specification form that we worked with and just plug the new numbers in. But the S20 forms were not designed to be application selection guides. You start with the sensor or transmitter, and that's backwards. Many years ago, I hit on the idea of trying to define a range of applications and then superimposing many types of level measurement devices and techniques on each range. I called it the level measurement continuum. I've talked and written about it before, but I haven't found a better method of finding your way through the thicket of applications. As you can see, the continuum ranges from applications that are too easy to mess with to too hard to do. Yes, there are still level measurement applications that are impossible to do with today's technologies, just as there are level measurements that are too easy to bother with. In those cases, somebody can occasionally just go over and lift the lid, 
Look inside and check whether the level is at the place that you want it to be or not. You can think of applications like this. Sumps, wet wells with high freeboards, tanks where level is maintained by an external force like a throttling valve or a flow control system. Most of the time you needn't measure the level unless you're obsessive about such things. While nearly any device will work on an application like this, whether you actually install one will depend on the value of the measurement data. If it's worth more than the cost to install and maintain the sensor and data transmission, well, you should probably go ahead and install the sensor. Now, this equation is likely to change with the coming introduction of inexpensive wireless level transmitters, as the cost of installation will drop substantially without wires or power connections. These are the applications where it's relatively easy to see how it might be done, too. Clean water, open channel flow in a primary device, still clean, non-fuming liquids in an atmospheric pressure tank. Now, this last one sometimes gets you in trouble. Often, liquids that don't fume in cold temperatures do so at higher temperatures. And note that oils and emulsions are very far up the continuum, almost to the few devices will work line. This is because many hydrocarbon-based liquids, emulsions, and tars give off vapor blankets that vary in thickness depending on the temperature in the tank. The higher the temperature, the thicker the vapor blanket. This gives ultrasonic sensors fits, for example, but it can also affect other technologies. Few devices will work. Now, I know I skipped the part about many devices will work. I'll be back to it. I'm leaving it to almost last because it's the most difficult. Truth is, in applications such as interface measurement, agitated tanks, vessels with internals, or other clearly difficult applications, red flag pops up and you automatically pay more attention to the application than those in the category many devices will work. This is good news. These applications are really difficult and they are seriously hard to do. Note that there's no divider between few devices and may not be measurable out there on the end. That's because any of these applications can be so burdened by qualifying issues that they become flatly impossible. A simple interface measurement may be doable with a differential pressure device. Okay, now make it an interface at 1200 degrees C. See what I mean? Consider a simple water level measurement as it was done in the containment units at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. It was very simple. Except the radiation levels were enormously high and the devices therefore needed to work maintenance free for 300 years. For such applications you need to gather as much information about the physical parameters as you can without regard for whether you think the data means anything and then package it all up and give it all to your supplier's most experienced engineer. And that supplier should have more than one measurement technology. It's too easy for a supplier in the heat of trying to help you and of course incidentally make a sale to make the, his device fit in your application whether it really does or not. Notwithstanding this tendency, here's where you better bring all the resources of your supplier or more than one supplier to bear. Okay, many devices will work. Oh, sure they will. You can come a cropper here really fast. Reaching for the level transmitter in your hip pocket for every application is so easy that too often you cross the border into dangerous territory before you know it. These applications should be standardized on a specific technology or even a specific level transmitter model. As you approach the middle of this chart, the level measurement continuum is not linear. There's a slippery and fairly deep slope right there in the middle of the chart that can be seen with powders and granulars. It's easy to shoot a level into a stationary tank containing granular material, unless, of course, there's an angle of repose or there's rat holing. Add vibration to get rid of the first two, and you may need to rethink your entire measurement method. You must always remember that you are not measuring level. You're measuring pressure, pressure differential, distance, capacitance, admittance change, or change in received radiation. Sometimes you have to infer a measurement that isn't really there. For example, when you're measuring the level inside an agitated tank that's vortexing, there is no level. What you're trying to do is to predict 
where the level will be when they turn off the agitator, and that's why measuring level is hard. This has been Walt Boys for the Process Automation Media Network with another Back to Basics episode. Thank you for watching.